Oh, you can do better than that. How many believe that God has been good to them? Amen. Amen. I'm, if you'll just indulge me one more time and stand to your feet as I read the word of God for those who may have missed it at the beginning. The word of God. Chapter two verses. Mark 10, 21 through 22. You'll understand why. If you can keep your Bibles open or your electronic uh, Bible, whatever the case may be, but if you could keep it open as we navigate ourselves through this scripture, Mark 10, verses 21 through 22, thus hear the reading of the word of God. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have. Give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. And at this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we thank you for preaching moments. We thank you, Father God, for those who have thought, thought it not robbery to press their way on the service and participate in this worship experience. We thank you, Father God, that for those that are participating on Zoom and on Facebook Live, we thank you, Father God, that you saw us fit to wake us up one more time. Now, gracious God, be with us during this service. Have your Holy Spirit come down on us. Bind my tongue and mouth so that only things that come forth are come from you. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And you may be seated for the next, uh, let me see, 12 minutes. And then you can all get your wings and, and tacos and whatever have you for Super Bowl Sunday. Brother Bolt, uh, Brother Paul Mark, I'm bringing your empanadas. Don't worry about it. I got them. I ordered them. I'm going to bring you your empanadas. I told him earlier that Paul Mark, the president of our organization, he did not have to go and hurt himself in order to stay home from work. We could have found other ways for you to stay home, but we, we, we're praying for you and for your recovery. Uh, my brothers and sisters, as a matter of intellectual integrity, the title of today's uh, message, the subject matter, was raised by my tag team partner in Bible study, Brother Edward Gordon. I give him kudos for he came up with this subject matter, uh, which is growing beyond our sum days. And so in E D I S growing beyond, beyond our sum days. But the substance of the message is the work of the Holy Spirit. Someday, I'm going to learn how to use this stuff. I'm going to purchase something. Someday, I'm going to FaceTime my grandchildren. Someday, I'm going to even cash app my church. Someday. Oh, church, church people know about someday. Someday I'm going to join. So someday I'm going to assist that sound ministry. Someday I'm going to help at the door. Someday I'm going to, I'm going to work in the finance room. Someday I'm going to even be a tither. Someday. Someday I'm, I'm going to say I'm sorry. Someday I'm going to resolve that misunderstanding we have. Someday I'm going to call up so-and-so and tell them I appreciate them someday. Or, or maybe your someday is not something you want to do, but maybe your someday is something you're going to refrain from doing. Someday I'm going to stop cursing. Someday I'm going to stop eating fried foods. Someday I'm going to stop eating pork. Someday I'm going to lose this 15 pounds. Someday. 
someday I'm, I'm going to stop hating and someday I'm going to stop causing so much trouble and someday I'm going to stop stirring the pot. And, and someday I'm going to stop with my small-minded thinking. And someday I'm going to stop with my small-minded attitude. Oh, I'm going to do it. Someday. What, 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 what is your someday? And let's be, let me be clear. There's nothing wrong with having a someday. And I said it before. Church people specialize in someday's. We got all types of special words for someday. One of them days, sooner or later, in the great by and by, in the due course of time, in the fullness of time. That's how church people say, I'm going to do it someday. And, and my issue with someday is not having one. My issue or the problem with some days is when our some days never come. Life is short. You can be here today and gone tomorrow. And, 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 and if you keep putting off your someday to a day in the future, your someday may never pass. Ask the protagonist in this morning's text. He missed his someday. This young, rich, young man. We don't even know his name. In fact, he's never mentioned in scripture again. And I got to believe the reason why we don't know who he is and we don't see him mentioned again because he let his someday pass him by. Someone is saying, preacher, hey, Mr. Lawyer, I, I, I read this text and I don't, I don't see where it says anything about him missing his Sunday, someday. Can we exegete it together? Let us walk through Mark 10 together and see if this rich young man has a lesson for you. Maybe he has a lesson for me in not letting our someday pass us by. Mark 10, Jesus was about to set out on his journey. Uh, Jesus was about to uh, get go to Jerusalem. Jesus was about to walk to Calvary. And as he's about to begin this journey, this young man approached Jesus and asked Jesus a question. What must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus turned to him. And, and in my own imagination, he smiled and looked at him. And it's obvious that he knew him because the word says he loved him. And Jesus said, you got to follow the commandments. Oh, you know the commandments. You shall have no other gods before me, and you shall have no idols, and you shall not take the name of your Lord God in vain, and you shall keep the Sabbath day holy, and you shall honor your mother and your father, and you shall not murder or commit adultery or steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's goods, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. And, then, and the rich young man says, I'm good. I've done that. I had no problem with that. And then Jesus turned to him and said, well, sell everything you own. Give the money to the poor. And follow me. He hit the brakes right there. Right there. This was too much for him right there. He says, no, don't ask me to do that. And the Bible says the rich man walked away grieving. And I believe he, he went away grieving because he missed his someday. He knew Jesus as a teacher. He, he called Jesus righteous. He knew that Jesus had special power. He respected Jesus for the word says he bowed down before Jesus. But because of his misplaced mentality, he missed out on what Jesus had to offer. He missed his someday. What would cause him to miss his someday? Maybe what caused him to miss his someday is the same thing that is causing us to miss ours. And at first glance, you may, you may say, well, it was the love of money which caused him to miss his someday. I would argue different. I would submit to you that, it, that his money was just a symptom of his condition, but not his cause. 
I would submit to you, it was myopic mindset that caused him to get into this condition. Myopic, meaning he, he was nearsighted. Myopic, meaning uh, he, he lacked a broader vision. Myopic, meaning he, he was small-minded living and small-minded thinking. Whatever it is that keep, uh, keeps us from living the life that God has in store for us is small-minded and myopic in effect. It, it was his failure to see beyond himself and not seeing the greater that caused him to miss his someday. And for some, for some of us, it will be the lack of money or, or the love of money that may cause us to miss our someday. Why is that? Because the Bible says where our treasure is, our heart will be also. And many of us hold on to our money so tight-fisted and so cheap in giving, so myopic in blessings that we miss out on our someday. You know, I've done this job just long enough to attend a few funerals and, per, 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 uh, and, and, and be the one who, 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 who prays with the family and comfort. And every time before they close the, 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 the casket, I have an opportunity to go over and look over. And can I tell you, I've never seen a casket filled with cash. I've yet to go down as I walk past, as I, as I prepare to eulogize and see the checkbook. <laughs> but but, but we, we think that money will keep us a, a, into the next world and the devil is... See, money can be the stranglehold of, on our mind. And the devil wants us to focus on our money and not our blessings. The, the focus should be on what God is doing, not on the 10% God is asking. And we are, we are always paying attention to what is left instead of making God a priority first. And for the rich young ruler, he was not able to walk into his someday because his vision was blinded by truly the little that he accumulated. And before we point our finger at the rich young man, be careful because all of us have something that is blocking us from diverting us or keeping us from walking into our someday. Preach pricey. What is it? Is it, is it love lost? Is, is, it, is, it, is it position or status? Is it to be with the Joneses? Do you, you got to be in that fraternity, that sorority, that, that Masonic organization, and all else fails? What, what is it that is keeping us from walking into our someday? Is it regrets of the past? Is it the mistakes of time gone beyond? Is it fear? See, fear will keep us from walking into our someday. What, what is it that is keeping us? from our someday. Whatever it is, I came here on this Sunday morning while it's snowing outside to, to tell somebody, today we're going to make up our mind. We're going to do this thing together. Uh, today we are not going to put it off. I'm talking about today we're not going to delay it any further. I'm talking about today we're not going to just name it and claim it. No, today we're going to do something about it. Today, not another second, not another hour, not another minute. Today we are going to walk into our someday. Or someday. And that's the first point of this message. Uh, we're going to walk into our someday today. The, see, see, the Bible says the man was shocked and he walked away from Jesus. And St. Mark, I came here to tell somebody, stop walking away. Those on Zoom, stop walking away. Those on Facebook, stop walking away. Don't lose our someday by walking away because what happens when we walk away from our Sunday, we end up with regrets and sadness and grief. How terrible life can be when you look back and say, I wish I would have. I wish I could have done this. I wish I would have done that. And this pastor 
wants to celebrate with you. I have no desire to console you from the desires of your heart that never materialized. So I came here to ask you, can we walk into our someday together? I ask you to keep your Bibles open, and, and, and even if you have it electronically, uh, I know you can do this. Um, to, when you open your Bible, turn to Mark chapter 10, grab a pen, and on the margin of Mark 10, write down the desires of your heart. I mean, right, right now, I mean, not this very second, write down why you in church, you know, why the Holy Spirit is down upon you, why, you know, God is working through you. Right now, write down, right on the side of Mark 10, what you always wanted to achieve. Right, write down what you've been putting off. Write down what you've been delaying. Write down that which you wish you only had the chance to do. Maybe it is a position you always wanted but did not have the qualifications. Maybe it's a desire to start your own business. Maybe it is your home you always wanted. Maybe it is to love again. Maybe it is to forgive again. Whatever it is, write it down right there in, the, the, in, the, in, the, in this good sacred book. Now I need you not just to write it down and forget it, but I need you to come back to it uh, next week and on Wednesday and on Thursday and next Sunday, open it up and look at what your desire is. And ask yourself as you turn to it, are you doing what is necessary to walk into it? Let it be a reminder that this preacher has asked you to let us walk into our someday together. And, and this nicely trans, uh, tra transitions into the next point of this message. Your someday is going to cost you something. Everything in life costs something. That position is going to cost you to gain some experience. That degree you want to pursue is going to take some time. It's going to cost you some space studying time that person you are looking for that person who you want to share your life with can i tell you you're going to, have to kiss a whole lot of frogs before you find yourself a prince or princess i mean that 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 house that you want is going to force you to save some money nothing in life is free everything costs something i've said it before we have a generation and a world of people who want everything but don't want to do anything. We have a whole country living in a reality TV world, not doing anything, or how I like to say it because where I'm from, not doing nothing, but expecting everything. We have people who are, they call themselves Instagram famous whose only talent is taking a photo. We want fame, but we don't want the training. We want titles, but we don't want the responsibilities. We want the anointing, <laughs> but you don't want to go through this pain. And, and, the, and the question that you should be asking yourself is what is my someday going to cost me? Because let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, it's going to cost you something. But here's the most incredible thing about our Jesus. His word says, and it's right in Mark 10, when you go home, read it for yourself. His word says, when we give our life to Jesus, whatever we pay, we will receive a hundredfold in our age and in the age to come. Did you hear what I just said? So I heard one amen, one amen, one amen. This should have been all of us in here shouting. Let me say it again. Jesus says, whatever we pay for to serve him, we will receive a hundredfold. A hundredfold. Not in the almighty. Not in the here over there. Not when we cross the golden shore. No, the word says we're going to receive it right here in the land of the living. And again, when we go across the Jordan. So the question is, what is the cost? 
What, 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 what is the cost? What, what is this going to cost me? Well, I, I like the way this rolls off my tongue. Uh, it's going to cost you this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. All these things. You want clothes? God will provide it. You want food? God will provide it. You want possessions? God will give it to you. God will give you the desires of your heart. But you got to seek ye first. Woo. The kingdom of God. Oh, yeah, yeah. God wants us to have all that we desire and all that we want. But we got to go to God first. That's what it costs you. So first point, we got to walk into it. Second point, understand it's going to cost us something. But here's number three. Look for your someday with a spiritual eye, not with worldly motives. Oh, uh, let me say one person back there. Let me say it over here. Look with your spiritual eye. Not your worldly motives. The, see, the rich young ruler could only see what he was giving up, not what he was gaining. His failure to see caused him to pass on his someday. He only saw that which he was forfeiting, not what he was about to be brought into. He could only picture that which he was letting go, not what God was about to bless him with. And when our some days are based on worldly values and not on godly inspiration, I'm here to tell you, you're going to leave disappointed. Did you read about that beautiful young girl who uh, she became uh, Miss America, had beauty, had fame, had money, and none of it could satisfy her because she was depressed and she was sad and she jumped off a roof. And I'm here to tell you, if you're looking for this world to satisfy you in any way, you will be disappointed. People will hurt you. Money, I'm here to tell you, will not fulfill you. Status is only for a moment. Early, I, earlier I asked you to write in the Bible that which you hope for for your someday. And I asked you for a purpose. I ask you to write it down in the word of God, not on a piece of paper, because it's my prayer and my hope that everyone who wrote something in their Bible wrote something biblically. Did you miss that? I didn't want you to write worldly things, and I hope that you wouldn't write worldly things in your Bible. I thought the Bible would be a, uh, a reflector to say, no, I can't write that. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, I would hope that you didn't write that um, um, the name of that person who, who you desire but has no desire for you. God has something better for you. Don't write that down. I, I would hope you would, would not write, um, uh, uh, you know that person at my job? Lord knows I don't like them at all. I hope God strikes them down, runs them over. No, I hope you didn't write that because God don't really want that. I would hope some of y'all would not write in your Bible, you know, I'm meant to be with Holly Berry or Idris Elba or Michael B. Jordan. Well, you can keep Holly Berry. Maybe the other guy, people can go. I would hope that your someday was not gaining material possessions because I came here to tell somebody, dust you came into this world and dust you will return. See, none of these worldly things are godly intended nor godly connected. But someone, you can get ready on your base, should have written, my someday is to obtain my degree. And then I'll be able to tell someone about a God who's Jehovah Ra. The Lord is my shepherd. God is still leading me. Someone should have written my someday is to have this affliction taken from me so I can testify about Jehovah Rapha. God is a healer. Someone should have written that my someday 
I'm going to travel to Alaska. I'm going to go to the motherland because I'm going to tell somebody that God is still Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there in incredible wonders. Someone should have written my someday. I'm going to have that home that I've always dreamed of because my God is still Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that still provides. Someone should have written my someday. My enemies will fall because God is still Jehovah Nisi. He is my banner. Someone should have written my someday. My family will be restored. Speak, praise it. God is still Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is my peace. Someday, someone should have written my someday. It's going to be today because God is still on the throne. He is still Jehovah Adonai. Don't you know what is your someday? Someday. 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 Oh, every, every, everybody standing. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Every head bowed and every eye closed. What is your someday? Oh, gracious God. We come to you on this February 13th. Not going into February 14th worrying about someday today is our someday today we declare and decree that God is going to give us the desires of our hearts today generational curses are being broken today financial security is coming today Families are being restored today. Hearts are being mended today. Someone is being forgiven today. We're not going to wait for someday. We're going to walk into it today. Someday. And someone this morning may, may be saying, I. I've been putting off this church thing too long. Don't put it off. Tomorrow is not promised. Don't wait till someday, but make it today. Jesus loves you. He doesn't care about how you dress or where you work or your past. He cares about your future. And he wants to be in relationship with you so you never have to feel that you are alone no matter where your someday may take you. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe, or maybe you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, but you're not grounded in a church, in a community of believers where they can pray for you and you can pray for them where your family can grow where they can learn about the Lord Savior Jesus Christ a place where you're happy a place where you can laugh and and you can cry this we don't claim to be a perfect church but we serve a perfect God and I would love to be your pastor and we would love to be your church home if I'm speaking to you whether it's on the Zoom, the internet, Facebook Live, just type your name in the comment section and I just wanna pray with you. Or maybe, maybe you're in the house of God right now. Just, if you know this is the place where you need to be planted, just raise your hand, raise your hand. No one can see but me, no one can see but me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Holy Spirit, move in this place touching each and every one under the sound of my voice. Father God, work with them and in them that they will find a home, a place where they're happy, that they can walk into there someday. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. 
Church says amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we, we in church here a little differently here at St. Mark. One thing I am going to do, I am going to do this. I think I'm going to take a picture with my frat brothers after, right after service. I'm going to have my mask on. Don't worry, brothers. Brother Winkler, good to see you. Good to see you. Tell the people of St. James, I said hello when you return to them. Amen. I don't want Brother Slaughter mad at me. I ain't trying to steal his members, okay? Uh, I'm going to take a picture with the Kappas up first. But this is how we in church here at St. Mark. Just repeat after me. Everybody standing, everybody standing and say, it's going to be a good week. It's going to be a great week. I'm going to bless somebody this week. And I'm going to receive a blessing this week. Oh, you could do better than that. I'm going to receive a blessing this week. And next week, I'm returning to service. And I'm going to give God the glory. Have a blessed week, everyone. The ushers are going to direct you out. The captains, if you'll come to the front. First lady, if I can get you to take a picture. Amen. Come on.